Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is episode number two of the Bug Squishing series. Um, we're going to get right down to it, look at some games with some glitches, and try to sort them out. Alright, so this first game is by Flaming Ice Cube Games. Um, the file is called Black. He says, hey man, I have learned almost everything from you, and I just need you to check my game out. Lots of bugs. Here are the ones I have found so far. When I'm pushed up against a wall and I try to jump over it, even though the sprite is over the wall, I can't move forward. Smooth scrolling goes way too slow, and it sometimes seems like it's going in the opposite direction of my character. Thanks for reading, and I hope you can fix these glitches. Alright, so we're going to open up black and see if we can figure out what's wrong with it. All right, let's take a look at the game. Zoom out a little bit. Okay, seems pretty simple. I like this sort of black and white aesthetic. Interesting main character. He kind of looks like E.T. Um, I'm guessing that's his camera object. All right, let's see how he does things. Collision between Active 7, Active 8. I don't know what these do. Uh, escape ends the application. Stops. Okay, so he's using built-in movements. He is not using the um, platform movement object. That's okay. Set gravity to one. Set gravity to 35. Okay, so he's got these actives. It looks like he's using to block the background. Okay, yeah. So I'm guessing you can't see those when you run the game. Um, so what was his, let's look at the character then, his player, and let's find out how he moves things. It's a platform movement. It's got button one. I think that's control. Let's run it and test and see if we're getting the same problems he's having. Space, okay. <clears throat> yeah, that is really slow. All right, we're gonna quit the application. Um, hopefully that actually showed up. I don't know if it did. I'm going to, I'm gonna change his game real quick, just in case, in case my recording was not working. I'm going to set it so that it does not change resolution mode um, and we don't want to maximize its start. Where is that at? There. Okay. <clears throat> so the first thing we want to do is uh, fix his, his problem with his camera. So let's look at his camera. Let's see how that's happening. Uh, be under always probably center display no okay so this camera is gonna have a behavior shut up dog his camera is gonna have a behavior let's go ahead and look at the behavior of this camera always set X position to scroller X set Y position to scroller well he's setting the X and Y to scroller X that's a problem um, does he have a scroller Y let's see he does have a scroller Y. So right off the bat, uh, you have made a mistake in pointing to the proper variable. That's going to cause an issue. Uh, all right, so set scroller X to scroll X plus X of that minus scroller X times 0 0.01. So scroller Y. Yeah, okay, the problem is entirely, I'm going to guess, is just the fact that uh, he missed, he using he's using the wrong uh, the Y. He's not using scroller Y. He's using scroller X for the Y position. So let's just go in here and change that boom all right okay it fixed the camera but the camera is still way too slow I would agree with that so we're gonna go ahead and modify this a little bit um, instead of he has it uh, times 0 0.01 we're gonna make that into 0 0.1 so get rid of this zero same with the Y times 0 0.1, that's our modifier. That should make it faster. Okay, camera is, is much smoother. So he's saying he he's saying that he can't uh, jump over stuff. I'm I'm not seeming to have that problem. Oh this is water. Okay. Let's try this again, see if I can figure out why or what he's having a problem jumping over. Yeah, it did seem like he was having trouble jumping over that. 
Okay. The problem is when you hold in when you hold in right, you have to tap it again when you're at the top. Um, that's really just going to be an issue with the built-in player movement. Uh, if you don't like the way the built-in player movement works, then I recommend you use the platform movement object and follow my platformer tutorial because I go through the whole thing and show you how to do it. And I just like that object better. I think it gives you more control over how your platform game works. But uh, we're going to go ahead and consider this fixed. So on to the next one. All right, here's another one. This is from Mitchell McLaughlin. Um, and... They say, I have this game I've been working on. It's a platform shooter sort of thing. The problem is that when I have is the action point, it is, wait, hold on. The problem is that I have is the action point it in the middle of the player object. So when I'm not moving and I click, I left click to shoot, it shoots from the action point. The problem is when I walk, when I walk the frame has not changed, the action point is still in the middle. When I shoot the bullet, it's off to the side. Okay, so they're having a problem with the action point. They probably have it in the wrong spot on one of their animations, but I am not 100% sure. I'll have to look at that. Also, I have this thing where if the bullet collides with the yellow square, the player object teleports to the yellow square in one frame. I would like to know how to make the player object teleport over many frames and pass through the yellow square a little bit so I can shoot the next bullet without the yellow square I just teleported to getting in the way. Um, okay. All right, we're going to test it and see what we got going on. Okay, they changed the resolution mode. I don't like that. Don't do that. I'm not even sure if that records. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this and see if we can figure out what's happening. Okay, so it is shooting. It. What the hell? Why is it? It's not shooting from the player. All right, you got something really weird going on here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So uh, let's see. When he shoots, user clicks left button, score equals zero, launch. Okay, he's launching, here's your problem. You're launching the attack from the camera, not the player. Um, so let's just replace that with the player launches the object. So let's go to launch an object. Object is the shot. Uh, launch in the direction of the aim. Zero, zero from the aim. Speed of 100. All right, so that should have fixed the problem with that yes okay yeah he was launching from the the camera which apparently is yeah it's a smooth scroll camera so the camera is actually hiding around behind the guy or trying to catch up with him so that fixed that so there's something to do with uh, these yellow things he wants to teleport to okay that was cool I guess it's just like a grappling hook that's pretty neat um, I don't understand his problem though he's saying he wants to go over many frames over many frames like what I don't actually know what he means. So, is he wanting to be to go on top of this thing or what? Um, okay. Well, unfortunately, I don't really understand the question. Uh, if you if you, you want to elaborate, that would be great. I will try to help you out. But we're going to consider this one finished. All right. And I'd say nice work, interesting concept. Uh, you made a simple mistake. You just probably clicked on the wrong object when you fired the the uh, the bullet. All right. So let's look. Let's close this and look at another one. Okay. This is from Mr. Paul Haas. He says, hello, Mr. Taco. I am an aspiring game designer, and I saw your new series, Bug Squashing 101. I think this idea is perfect for new designers, programmers, to help fix some issues not a lot of other tutorials shed light towards. Anyways, I thought I could both contribute to another episode and receive some help with some bugs in my game. Um, okay, first off, on the title screen of the game, I have set up a main menu and a sub-menu that can be navigated with the W and S keys. This is going to be complicated, I bet. Whenever the player presses enter or some other method I have set up on the main menu, the pointer will go to the submenu and can select some other options. The problem is that whenever the player selects back, the pointer will not travel back up to the main menu, and the options the player can select will be the submenu options. However, I try to fix this. The pointer stays on the main options and doesn't select the sub options. I currently have it set up the prior way so that you can see what is supposed to happen with sub options. We're going to take a look at that then real quick. All right, let's do it. Okay, well this is cool. I really like the aesthetic, I like the music. Um, let's go to options. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of uh, Zelda. 
All right, so he's got, he can switch this. I'm guessing this goes to full screen. We won't do that. And this goes back. Yep, as I can see, there is, there is no longer a uh, sword, a selector there. Let's go ahead and look at this. Oh man. All right, this is gonna take a second. <laughs> Hold on, let me look at this. I might have to edit this out. Do, do, do. Okay, we got option state of the sword equals main. He's activating some groups and deactivating another group. Same position, so he's setting the sword position when that happens. Uh, okay, selection equals zero, one. He's limiting his selections. He's switching directions. Why is he switching directions of this object? No. Nope. Okay, he's switching directions of the object because that's how he's that's how he's doing the the animation for the choice. So up would be uh, that it's this whole block here. The sword actually can uh, has an up animation and down animation. The up animation points to start game, down points to options. So that makes sense. Um, Okay, so he's using lots of ores. I've never explained ores to anyone, but essentially they do exactly what you think they would. It, it allows you to sort of uh, consolidate expressions or, uh, you know, conditions so that you can have, you know, this or this or this or this will happen, then we trigger this. All right, so this is pressing up, pressing up, pressing up on the D-pad, or if the mouse pointer is over start, subtract one from selection. Okay, so he's switching the selections when you press up and down. When you press enter, uh, and these are all up, which would be, wait, we're in the main options here, so that would be the first screen. This is on main, so this is when you're on the first screen. If you press enter while up, then we are destroying this. That's because that starts the game. Yeah, so it's destroying that object. I don't know if you have to do that. I don't know if he's got some special object, but yeah, that works. Uh, okay, hold on. Now we got the options where he has the problem. Again, he's limiting. Same thing. Uh, toggle internal flag one. I just don't see any place that. When is he sending it back up? Camera scrolling. Center display from an object here. Okay. Uh, okay, he has a. Uh, He's got a movement here where he's going to start and reverse it. That's something I haven't explained either. That's a built-in movement. It's a path. So he's got a path. So let's it's switching the screen up and down. Set option state to option. Okay. Well then right here when it's down, this is when the this state should go to main. He never sets it to main again. Start reverse. Okay, well this should be really easy. We're gonna drop this over here. We're gonna edit this. And we're gonna set this to main. Now, I, I haven't spent a lot of time looking at this, so this might not completely work, but we will we will find out. Let's run the application again. Okay, let's go to the options. Oh, uh, no, I completely broke it. Let me look at this. Okay, when it's main, when it's on options and it's down, you press, it should, it should set it to main. And then main should trigger up here there you go. Option stays main. Activate the group main options. Deactivate options options and set the position back. Why is that not working? Okay, uh, I'm gonna do. I think I know what's happening here. I think this is this is actually. I don't know why Fusion does this. Um, I think this is an issue where sometimes when you flip something like this, a state really quickly. Even though this is linear, this should be reading event 35 and then event 36. Sometimes they like happen all at once and it flips it twice and it gets really confused and nothing happens. And then you have to you have to create a cooldown. It's it, I don't actually think it's something that should be happening, but it it does. So we're gonna add a cooldown and see if that fixes it. So we're gonna go to the sword. I'm gonna add a new value. I'm gonna call it cooldown. <clears throat> all right. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do that right here. We're gonna call this cooldown stuffs. All right, we are always going to count down the cooldown to zero. So go to alterable values under the sword. Compared to one of the alterable values, we are going to see if cooldown is greater than zero. And if it is greater than zero, we are going to subtract one from it. So alterable values, subtract one from cooldown. So that'll bring cooldown to zero. Now we only want to trigger these these two events that switch the um, the group of events whenever cooldown is zero. 
So let's go ahead and we're going to have to add, because he's used an or event, we're going to have to do this a lot of times, but that's okay. We'll just copy and paste. Multiple values, compare. We're going to compare and see if cooldown equals zero. Now we have to do this for every single or. So just grab and throw it in for every or. So there's cooldown. There's one there, one there. We need one up here. We need one down here. We need one over here. And we need one over here. And that's, I'm just using control C, control V to copy and paste those. All right, uh, one last thing. Whenever it switches, we have to change the cooldown to a number so we can cool it. We can bring it back down. That way it won't trigger again, uh, which is what we're trying to stop from happening. So we're going to set the cooldown to something like, I don't know, 30. And we will do that here too. Cooldown to 30. All right, let's run the application and see if I was correct. Okay. Let's go back. There it is. It works. Uh, yeah, like I said, but sometimes fusion is is goofy like that. I don't I don't really think it should be doing that. But you know, correct me if, if someone out there is a better programmer than me. Explain to me why that is happening. Um, but it seems like if it is being triggered linearly, it should not happen. But whatever. Okay, so on this next one, um, he's having an issue where he says his player, when he goes left, is walking on his head. So let's take a look at it and see what's up with that. So I move right, fine. And yeah, he's walking on his head. Um, well, let's look at the animations and see if it's upside down. No, left animation is not upside down on any of the animations, not stopped or walking. Um, maybe he's rotating it in the code. Let's look at that. Set direction change, no. Uh, what? Okay, so he's not rotating it. This is very basic. All right, let's look at the uh, properties in the object. Maybe he's got something done here that I'm not aware of. Okay, automatic rotations. We're going to unclick automatic rotations. That's probably the problem. He's moving right, and he's moving left. Problem solved. Okay, so if you don't want your characters to flip upside down, uh, don't click this button. I didn't even know that was there, so uh, don't click on that. And that's that. All right, guys, well, this concludes uh, the bug fixing series episode number two. Uh, if you have a bug that you would like me to take a look at in the bug fixing tutorial series, then go ahead and send it to zintacoproductions at gmail.com. And if it's something that I think uh, people could benefit from, I will put it in a tutorial. So as always, guys, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And uh, if you want to get a hold of me quickly, you can either email me, like I said, or you can go to my Discord, which you will find the link in the description. So you guys all have a great day. I'll catch you later.